So your budget to buy a home is in the $600,000 range, but you just cannot make your mind up on if you want to buy a home in DC or if you want to buy a home in Maryland. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you what the $600,000 range gets you in DC. And then I'm going to drive all the way to Maryland, show you what the 600K range gets you out there. And at the end, not only am I going to compare the housing between these two places, but I'm also going to be going over things like the neighborhood, access to amenities and transit, walkability, property taxes, and last but not least, at the end, I'm going to reveal which one of these two markets has less competition, making it easier for you as a buyer to secure a home in 2024. Let's get out there. If this is your first time here and you want to learn every single thing about Washington, D.C. real estate, you're at the right place. Feel free to subscribe below. I'm Bashir and our team gets calls, texts, emails every single day from folks just like you. Yes, you looking to buy a home or sell a home in the D.C. metro area, whether you're looking to buy or sell in the next 30 days or more. Feel free to text me, call me, shoot me an email. All my contact details are in the description below. As always, look forward to helping you find the right home in the right neighborhood in the DC metro area. We're starting off the day, this DC versus Maryland comparison. We're starting off in DC. We're in DC first, we're in Northeast in the neighborhood of Brookland, AKA Little Rome. It's known as Little Rome because the Catholic University of America, which is a very prominent university in the country is in this neighborhood of Brookland. So in Brookland, you can find many different types of homes. You can find your traditional single family detached homes. You can find your traditional federal row homes and you can find you know, new construction homes like this one and uh, new construction condos like that one, the uh, this one and this one right behind me, which is the one that we're actually going to be uh, looking at. But first, let's do a deep dive into the neighborhood of Brookland and then we'll take a look at the space. Let's start off the neighborhood tour by exploring one of the main attractions at the Monroe Street Market, which is the Brookland Arts Walk. The Brookland Arts Walk consists of 27 art studios, which represent local and independent artists, makers and crafters. It's a pedestrian friendly corridor lined with artist studios, galleries and creative spaces. These studios offer visitors a chance to observe artists at work and purchase unique handmade art directly from the creator. So if you're someone who's into the arts, this is definitely a spot that you might want to check out. The outdoor seating across the street belongs to Brooklyn Pint, a small community restaurant where you can grab some American style food and craft beer. There's also a tropical smoothie cafe right across the street if you're in the mood for a smoothie. Some of the other amenities at the Monroe Street Market include a Bus Boys and Poet, which is a bookstore, restaurant, and coffee shop combo. There's also an and pizza, pop belly sandwich shop, Chipotle, and a Starbucks right across the street from highly ranked Catholic University. Also right across the street from the Catholic University is an Orange Theory Fitness that's coming soon. So look out for that. So let's head over to the 12th Street corridor where there's no shortage of local businesses. There's a Yes Organic Market for fresh organic produce. Neighborhood favorites include Lido Pizza, Minimale Pizza, Brooklyn's finest bar and kitchen with outdoor seating. You can grab some delicious Indian food at Masala Story. For recreation in Brooklyn, you can visit the Turkey Thicket Rec Center. Outdoor amenities include a walking track, a baseball field, a tennis court, and indoor amenities include a gym and also an indoor pool. Next up, Brooklyn's real estate. Okay, so the rain is starting to come down. Let me give a quick overview of this unit so I can get out of here. It's just been so gloomy all week. I don't know what's going on with the weather in DC. Anyway, this is a three bedroom, two and a half bath, 1200 square foot unit, parking space, extra storage. There's a HOA fee of $205 a month, which covers the extra storage. So you get an extra storage with your unit and this is priced at $650,000. So let me get out of this rain and let's take a look at this home. Six units in this building. These are the first two. We're all the way at the, on the top floor. Um, but let me show you the storage unit for this, uh, the storage units for this property. So, as you can see, they're numbered two, four. We're looking at unit six. 
So this is a storage unit right here. So good amount of space in case you're someone with a lot of stuff and um, you know it's not gonna fit in the in the actual unit. So then we have parking back this way. I guess I'm gonna have to go back in the rain. So these are the parking spots. So you can park right here and just uh, either walk around to the front or you can walk this way to get in the building. Now let's head up to the actual unit. Going up three flights of steps. Now I know a lot of people don't like steps, but gotta look on the positive side, right? It kinda, the steps keep you somewhat active, you know? So I got this watch that I wear all the time and I've got like 6,000 steps already in the morning. Try to aim for 10,000, but anyway, this is the unit, and to the right here we have the rooftop deck. All right, we'll check that out soon. So here we are. Now, the first thing that I notice when I come in here is luxury, luxury, luxury. All right, Whew, trying to catch my breath. So let me just go through every single detail in this condo, right? So we walk in, we have this kitchen, have a huge island, right? We have our light fixtures up top, recessed lighting throughout. And, uh, you know, we have this electric stove. This is a Thor stove and the dishwasher is Samsung. We've got the white oak floors. And uh, if we look over here, we can see, you know, we've got the, uh, these European flat panel contemporary cabinets, right? And this is like, this is like a heavy cabinet, right? And uh, of course it comes with soft clothes because the impact with the cabinets on, you know, the other side would just be atrocious if it didn't have soft clothes. We've got the pop filler up top. We've got the herringbone uh, marble backsplash. Solid white quartz countertops. And uh, we've got these beautiful floor to ceiling windows that bring in a ton of natural light. Now it's a rainy, gloomy day in DC. So, you know, we're not getting the best light, but it's We have them on, on uh, in the middle and on the left and the right, all right? We've got the dining setup right there. We have our living area right here and the kitchen. We've got this beverage bar right here. It's a uh, coffee and tea station, you know, great for everyday entertaining. We've got the wine fridge, open shelving, right? To store your wine glasses and plates. Now we've got additional storage with these drawers at the bottom. So really cool setup. Now those windows don't actually open, but these, you could actually open that one. You can see the handle right here, All right? So that actually opens up. If you wanna get some fresh air into the unit, it's perfect for that. 
They've also got the two-tone cabinetry. So you've got the white, and then you've got this kind of um, oak color, right? Same thing over here. So they went with the white countertops and then the oak colored cabinets. And then we've got the microwave. We've got our refrigerator, double door, right? With the water filter. All right, let's head to, and these cabinets go all the way up. Okay, so this is the first bedroom to our left. Again, floor to ceiling windows. Got our closet. And then we have this Jack and Jill setup that takes us to the second bedroom. Now they have this as a den in the listing, but I definitely think you can use this as a bedroom, but we'll get to that in a second. So there's our vanity. We've got this mirror with LED lighting, right? go around this way this is our washer and dryer Samsung appliances and uh, oh they've got a catch pan now believe it or not in a lot I've been seeing a lot of properties lately where they install this washer and dryer and they don't put a catch pan right that's important because God forbid if the washer leaks you don't want all that water just flowing onto your floors and now you have to pay to get the washer fixed and now you have to pay for brand new floors and these aren't cheap floors by any means right so very important to have that catch pan right there and if you're buying a home and there's no catch pan it's probably going to come up on the home inspection but uh, you want to look out for that so again this is our powder room We've got the LED mirrors. And then we've had, we have this floating vanity set up right here with soft closed cabinets, right? This is the second bedroom. Now it's not, I mean, the, it's not huge, but uh, I think you can definitely fit a bed in here. Now it's gonna be tight, but hey, if you don't need the third bedroom, you can just have this as a workspace. There goes our water heater. Yeah, so there's no closet in here, so it wouldn't count as a real bedroom. But it's a perfect uh, work from home space because, you know, uh, limited distractions. This window, there are no views out here, so you're not gonna get distracted by any views. This is just the neighboring unit. So not much to look at. Helps you focus and actually, <laughs> you know, get some work done. Okay. Now this is our main bedroom, right? Same theme throughout, we have the white oak floors, floor to ceiling windows, with the uh, drapes installed. See what the closet space looks like. 
got goes all the way down. So we have a wall to wall closet right here. Decent amount of space. And then we've got additional space at the top. You can put your shoes. Well, I would put my shoes right there at the bottom. I don't know about up there, but hey. We have our bathroom over here, so we they have this set up as a additional work area, but uh, you know, you can set that up for yeah, I think it works perfect having that as a work uh, work area. So let's head into the bathroom. Again, we have this floating vanity. This is dual vanity. We have the LED lighting, right? Got these large format modern tiles. Then we have our shower. We've got the single pane glass door. So you can just head right in. This protects the water from coming out. So there's really no need for a an additional, you know, door right there because it just keeps this door is sufficient to keep all the water from coming out when you're taking a shower. Uh, and you know, it's just looks like a has a better aesthetic about it, you know. So I like the different colors, the black and also the white. Let's check out this rooftop. So it's still raining. Man. This is the shared space. See the entire neighborhood from here. Parking down there. So now that we've seen an example of what the six hundred thousand dollar range could buy you in DC, let's head over to Maryland. Now you want to stick around to the end because I'm going to be doing a full breakdown and side-by-side -side comparison between this home and neighborhood in DC versus the home and neighborhood in Maryland, just so we have full perspective and you can see what each jurisdiction has to offer and if it matches with your lifestyle. Stay tuned. So as we head over to our next destination, I just wanted to point out one thing, just for context purposes. So I know I showed a $650,000 condo in DC, but I just wanna make it clear that you can also buy a townhouse and a single family house in DC in you know a few neighborhoods for $650,000. So I didn't wanna make it seem like the only options you have at your disposal in DC with that budget were only condos, right? You can definitely buy single family homes and townhouses. The condo just happened to be the home available for today in that price range. Okay, so that was a long 45 minute drive from DC to Maryland. Uh, now to be more specific, let me reveal where exactly in Maryland we're at. We're in Clarksburg in Montgomery County. Now, if you're not familiar with Clarksburg, Clarksburg is around 25 miles northwest of Washington, DC. So it sits right along the I-270 highway making it you know a part of the greater dc metropolitan area it's known for its suburban feel 
It's known for its great schools and it's also known for having lots and lots of parks for outdoor activities and hiking and water activities and so on and so forth. So it's a really great spot for families and individuals who are looking for a slower pace of living and a quieter suburban community. Not saying there aren't quiet and suburban parts of DC, but they're usually gonna be more on the expensive side. And in Clarksburg, you're still within commuting distance of DC. So you can't go wrong with that. Anyway, let's do a deep dive into the neighborhood and then we'll come back and take a look at this home. So Clarksburg is a city located in Northern Montgomery County. Now for most of its existence, it was a quiet rural area that was dominated by mostly farmland and was largely untouched by the rapid development that shaped pretty much the rest of Montgomery County. It wasn't until the early 2000s that Clarksburg began to see significant change. Now the area has become one of the fastest growing parts of Montgomery County with an influx of both commercial and residential development. One of the biggest milestones in Clarksburg's transformation was the construction of the Clarksburg Premium Outlets, which opened in 2016. These outlets were built to meet the growing demand for shopping and entertainment in the area. The development is home to over 90 stores, making it a major retail destination, not only for Clarksburg residents, but for people from surrounding areas like Boyd's and Germantown, Maryland. Some of the most notable brands you find here include Coach, Ferragamo, Levi's, Armani, Calvin Klein, Steve Madden, Marc Jacobs, Saks Fifth Avenue, and so many more. So whether you're shopping for luxury items or looking for deals on everyday essentials, the outlets offer a wide variety of options for every shopper. Now, what makes the Clarksburg Premium Outlets even more convenient is their proximity to the community. Having such a wide range of stores nearby means you don't have to travel far to find quality shopping, making it a huge benefit for the people who live here. Plus, if you need a break from shopping, Market Hall located at the outlets provides a place to grab a bite to eat with different food options available to refuel before heading back to shop or heading back home. But the outlets aren't the only commercial development in Clarksburg. Just a few miles away, you'll find the Clarksburg Village Center, another central hub for residents. The Village Center offers essential amenities for day-to-day -day living starting with the Harris Tito where locals can do their grocery shopping. In terms of dining, there's Villa Maya Restaurant, known for its authentic Mexican food, and the Clark's Lodge Bar and Grill, a casual spot perfect for grabbing a drink or enjoying a meal. You also have Red Bull, which serves up some great Asian food. In addition to the food and shopping, Clarksburg Village Center has services that makes life easier for residents. There's ATI Physical Therapy, a clinic for those in need of rehab, and an urgent care center for immediate medical needs. For fitness enthusiasts, Orange Theory Fitness offers high-intensity workout classes. And for pet owners, Scent Hound Routine Dog Karen Grooming provides regular grooming services while there's also a veterinarian office for all your pet's health needs. Now, despite all this new development, Clarksburg has managed to hold on to much of its rural charm. One of the ways you can still experience the area's natural beauty is through its parks and green spaces. Black Hill Regional Park is a prime example. Spanning over 2,000 acres, this park is a favorite among locals and offers a wide variety of outdoor activities. The Black Hill Discovery Center is an educational space where visitors can learn about the local environment and wildlife. The park also offers boat rentals on Little Seneca Lake, including an accessible kayak launch that ensures everyone can enjoy the water. If fishing is your thing, the park provides great opportunities for that as well. For those who prefer land-based activities, there's miles and miles of walking trails that weave through the park, perfect for hiking or casual strolls. Rentable picnic shelters make Black Hill a great spot for family gatherings and events, while the playgrounds offer fun for the younger ones. There's even a volleyball court for a bit of competitive fun. Another large park in the area is Little Bennett Regional Park, known for its camping facilities and wooded trails that offer a peaceful escape into nature. It's an ideal spot for those who enjoy hiking or simply want to experience the outdoors in a serene setting. You also find Ten Mile Creek, a beautiful natural area where locals can go for hiking, bird watching, or just to enjoy the quiet surroundings. It's a hidden gem in the area and a great place to connect with nature. All of this green space is truly a huge benefit for the Clarksburg community. It allows residents to balance the conveniences of suburban life with easy access to nature. So whether it's spending a weekend at the park, hiking along a trail, or just relaxing by the lake, Clarksburg offers a little bit of everything, creating a lifestyle that combines the best of modern development and also natural beauty.
So we're in the Clarksburg Square community in Clarksburg. Now, interesting thing about this community is the entire community is powered by solar. There's a swimming pool in the community. You have a fitness center and a playground for kids and different amenities. Now, as far as a house goes, it's a three bedroom, three bath, 2000 square foot home with a garage. Now, we ran into some technical difficulties because I was actually gonna show a different house that was 2300 square feet, but then I get to the house and then the lights weren't, the, the, the electricity was off. I get to the home and I realize no lights. So we're gonna have to pivot and make an adjustment here to another house down the street. But this home has a slightly bigger kitchen, also a bigger living space. A basement, which you probably can't see because it's completely dark. And also a fourth level with a deck. Now, I would show the rest of the home, but trust me, it's very dark and, uh, you know, just wouldn't make for a good experience. So I can't show you guys a home that has no electricity, right? And it's a gloomy day, so we can't take advantage of the sunlight. So that, I'm gonna show you this home instead. This home is priced at $615,000. Uh, the other home was priced at six fifty, dollars but we're not gonna take a look at that one, uh, which is actually a bigger home. Uh, but we're gonna take a look at this one, so uh, let's check it out. It's the front of the home. See, we have this. Uh, there's a seating area right there, like an outdoor kind of like a gazebo setup. And I really like the exterior. Look at the cat staring at me. <laughs> I like the exterior of this home. Okay, put on the shoe covers. All right, so this is our first, first level. So this space could be used as an office, a secondary living room, uh, whatever you please. We have this wide plank hardwood floors. There's also powder room on this level also. So, I mean, your, your, your typical townhome setup that you see in a lot of planned communities these days, right? Coat closet and our garage. So, can't locate the lights there, but uh, as you can see, two car. two-car garage and we'll head upstairs to the main level we have our powder room So obviously this home has, I mean, it's double the size of the DC home, but um, the finishes in the DC home were a bit more on a luxury side. Now there's nothing wrong with these finishes. These are, you know, you're, we have granite countertops. We have our double oven right there, gas stove. We have our pendant lighting right there above the uh, our island, right? So definitely on the modern side of things, but you we we don't get that luxury as uh, like we get in DC, right? Because again, you know you're you're appealing to a different demographic in DC comparing to compared to you know out here. So we have our dishwasher. And our refrigerator is over there, right? And we have our pantry. 
And right here we have our outdoor space. And then the garage is right underneath. So you have the garage and then you also have multiple parking spaces for additional guests. So a really quiet community. Okay, right, so let's head up to the third level. Let's see what we got. Linen closet. So a laundry area right here. Frigidaire appliances. Bathroom, pretty standard uh, build of great finishes. You got the tile on the floor, and this entire level is carpeted. You got the ceiling fans. Closet space. This seems to be a bigger bedroom than the other one. All right. And it's the main bedroom. Which has its own bathroom the bathroom is right there but you see the closet space yeah let's check out the bathroom so got a privacy door right there by the toilet we've got this tile dual vanity and shower so no tub in this home So we've seen what a $600,000 range budget buys you in DC and in Clarksburg, Maryland. Now, seeing there's no furniture in this home and I can't sit and really get into detail about the differences between the two, let's head back to DC and have that conversation. So now that we've toured the home in DC and we've also seen the home and neighborhood in Clarksburg, Maryland, let's talk about a couple of distinctions between these two areas. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is, which is the most obvious thing? Let's address the elephant in the room. In Clarksburg, you obviously get more space for your money. So the first home we toured in Brooklyn in DC was around 1200 square feet. And the home we toured in Clarksburg in Maryland was 2300 square feet. So an additional thousand square feet for roughly around the same price. 
If you're someone who is looking to get as much value as possible, as far as space is concerned from your dollars, then it might make sense to, you know, buy a home in Maryland. Now, another thing that was noticeably different as far as the properties are concerned is the condo in Brooklyn in DC, it, it had more of a luxury feel. So if you look at, you know, the finishes and the design compared to the home in Clarksburg, you can clearly see that the home in DC offers more of a luxury feel, right? From the floor to ceiling windows, the two-tone cabinets, the luxury tile in the bathroom, it's more of a luxury and contemporary feel. Now, compared to the home in Clarksburg, that's a newer home as well. It was built in 2019. I wouldn't say the finishes in that home were luxury by any means, but they were modern, right? They were your typical builder grade finishes, which, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. It just depends on your preference. Some of the spaces in the Clarksburg home had carpet, which, you know, is just something we're not going to see in DC for the most part, or even at all in new construction. And this is not me knocking carpet. As a matter of fact, I actually like carpet. It just has to be in the right place in the home, right? So carpet on the, on the main level is just an absolute no-no for me right? Put the carpet in the basement where it belongs. Now let's talk about the property taxes. The home in Brooklyn in DC, the property taxes are $5,820 for the year. In Clarksburg, the property taxes are $6,228 per year. Now, interestingly enough, most people don't know that DC has lower property taxes than a lot of counties in Maryland. So even though the average prices in DC are higher, DC has lower property taxes. And you know, that's just because of a, a couple factors. The first one being DC just has a different tax structure to Maryland counties and DC relies more on income and sales tax to generate revenue instead of trying to generate all that revenue from property taxes. Another reason is because DC tends to have higher property values than most counties in Maryland. So the city is able to generate a lot of revenue from this increased property value, even with a lower tax rate. So the higher prices in DC just offset the need for a super high property tax. I mean, let's take Prince George's County, for example, right? Their property taxes are out of control. The average home in Prince George's County is two to $300,000 less than the average home in DC, but their property taxes are significantly higher. So a $600,000 home in DC compared to a $600,000 home in Prince George's County, that 600K home in Prince George's County might have significantly higher taxes than the same home in DC that cost the same. But I don't wanna to get too far down that rabbit hole. Let's move on to the third point. So let's talk about walkability and proximity to transit, public transportation. The Brookline neighborhood in DC has a 76 out of 100 walk score, 72 out of 100 transit score, and an 87 out of 100 bike score. Clarksburg, on the other hand, has an 11, yes, 11 out of 100 walk score. You're not gonna be able to walk to too many places. 26 out of 100 bike score, and I couldn't even find a transit score for Clarksburg. And that's because there's no direct metro servicing the Clarksburg area. The closest metro to Clarksburg is the Shady Grove Metro, which is about 16 miles away, which is probably going to be like a four hour walk. And, you know, nobody's trying to do that. Now, they do have the Mark train system, but that's more for like long distance commuting versus your metro that you have in D.C. for your day to day commute into work and other places that you need to be. Now, there are a few bus lines in Clarksburg that take you within the city. But one thing that's definitely lacking is the absence of an easily accessible and convenient metro. Now, sticking on the topic of transit and transportation, let's talk about the distance to the closest airport from Brookline in DC and also from Clarksburg in Maryland. Now, the Reagan Airport is only 18 minutes from the Brookline neighborhood with no traffic, and it's about a 40 minute drive from the neighborhood of Clarksburg with no traffic. So for those of you who like to travel a lot for maybe work or leisure, that's something to consider as well. Because if you're someone who likes to, you know, be a little risky and get to the airport 30 minutes before it's time to board, you might want to live somewhere that has close proximity to an airport. Now, let's talk about the neighborhood vibe, which I think is very important. And this could actually be the deal breaker or a deal saver for folks considering living in DC or anywhere in Maryland. Now, Brooklyn has, it, it has a character of its own. Right, it has its own unique charm. It's a historic, more established neighborhood. Brookland was founded in like the 20th century back in the 1800s. So this neighborhood has been around for a while. So you're gonna see a lot of the homes, they have this classic architectural detail, and you also have a mix of modern homes and condos as well. So the neighborhood has a, a very diverse range of property types. Brookland also has like this very artsy and urban feel. You can walk to a lot of local restaurants. So you're not gonna find a lot of chain Restaurants out here, most of the restaurants and cafes are they're small, locally owned neighborhood favorites. Now, if we compare that to Clarksburg, 
it's more of a suburban feel with it, more of a family friendly atmosphere. Not to say Brookland doesn't have a family uh, friendly atmosphere because Brookland is probably one of the quieter neighborhoods in DC. Now it's not the most quiet, but it's definitely on the quieter side compared to like Bloomingdale, Eckington, Noma, Shaw, Columbia Heights, etc. Clarksburg, it's more suburban with the flair of rural as well. So you have the amazing parks, trails, and outdoor areas. So for those looking for a quieter and slower pace of life, Clarksburg might be a better fit. But as far as the neighborhood goes, I wouldn't say it has anything too distinct that makes it stand out like Brookland. It's your typical Maryland suburban neighborhood slash, you know, planned community. Now let's talk about the real estate market. Now in the beginning of the video, I promised that I was going to reveal which one of these two markets, neighborhoods in DC and neighborhoods in Maryland, specifically Montgomery County, had less competition, making it easy for you as a buyer to secure a home in 2024. Now, let me just give some perspective here. Let's have a real conversation. Buying a home is unlike anything else you would ever buy. Most things we buy on a day to day basis don't require competition. Think about it, right? If you went to the grocery store and you wanted to buy a bottle of milk, it doesn't matter if you go to the store at 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. That bottle of milk, for the most part, is always going to be in that refrigerator. When you're shopping on Amazon, if you're trying to buy a wallet, right? This wallet is always, for the most part, is always going to be there 8 a.m., 8 p.m., 3 a.m., 3 p.m. Because these items just tend to have an abundance of supply. Now, when it comes to buying a home, buying real estate, that's not the case. So that often leads to people having to compete over these assets. And when you're buying a home, it's very important that you know the temperature of the, the market that you're buying in, whether that's DC or whether that's in Maryland, right? It's important to know how hot or how cold the market is, just so you have the proper expectations going in. Because the worst thing that you want to happen is you're going into a hot market thinking that the market is actually colder than it is. And then, you know, you're making these offers, they're not getting accepted and you, you get frustrated because you can't seem to get a house. Or on the flip side, you, you're going into a cold market and you think the market is so hot and you end up overpaying when you could have negotiated a little bit more. So let's look at some actual data on the DC market and the Montgomery County real estate market. I'm going to put up this image on the screen. And I know there are a lot of numbers here, but I'm going to break this down in a very easily and digestible manner. This is basically the market report for August 2024. It's analyzing all the metro markets in D.C. So we have D.C., Montgomery County, Prince George's County, Fairfax, Arlington, Alexandria, etc. Right now, I only want us to focus on Washington, D.C. and Montgomery County. So as we can see, Washington, D.C., look at this figure right here that that says months of inventory. It's right around four and a half. Let's compare that to Montgomery County. Their months of inventory is right around one and a half. Now, what does this mean? Let me break it down. What this means is, let's use DC as an example. If no other homes came on the market, if everyone put a pause on putting their home on the market right the second, it's going to take roughly around four and a half months for all the inventory in DC to get sold. Comparing that to Montgomery County, if everyone in Montgomery County stopped listing their homes for sale, it's going to take about a month and a half for all the Montgomery County inventory to sell off. What does this mean? All this means is that in D.C., the homes are taking a lot longer to sell compared to Montgomery County, right? Because D.C. has around four and a half months worth of inventory. And, we, and as we can see, that translates to more homes available for sale in D.C. compared to Montgomery County. As we can see here, D.C. has over 2,000 homes for sale. Montgomery County has just over 1,000 homes for sale. Now you might be wondering, why is that the case? And here's the thing. Montgomery County, as far as the population goes, is like almost twice the size of D.C. D.C. has a 600,000 uh, population. Montgomery County has over a million people. So by default, they're going to be way more homes, but there are more homes for sale on the market in D.C. Why is that the case? Well, that's because in D.C., the competition for homes is not as great as it is in Montgomery County. Now, this never used to be the case. And let me tell you why this is. Now, we all remember what happened in 2020, the pandemic hit. And you, the, the draw for a lot of people to live in D.C. over the past decades and decades has been living in close proximity to your work, right? A lot of people come to DC for work purposes and they don't wanna have to commute 
three hours, an hour and a half to and an hour and a half from work every single day. So you know what? They'll rather live in like a one or two bedroom condo in the city. They can walk 10 minutes to work or they can hop on a train and be at work in 30 minutes, right? But when the pandemic happened, a huge contingent of the population received the privilege of working from home. So what does that do? People start thinking, well, we can move out to the suburbs. We can get more space for our money because now we don't have to commute to work anymore. So that whole dilemma of wanting to live so close to your work, that's eliminated because they don't have to worry about commuting anymore. So during the pandemic, we started seeing a lot of people moving from DC to different suburbs of Maryland and Virginia. And the demand for DC real estate just went down right now. I'm not saying that the DC real estate market is crashing by any means. Um, DC is still a competitive market, but it's nowhere near as competitive as what it used to be. And this is not the entire DC. It's kind of like neighborhood by neighborhood. Some neighborhoods are going to still hold their heavy competition like Chevy Chase and different neighborhoods in upper Northwest. So it just depends, right? I, I don't want to blanket the whole DC. And I don't want to make it seem like everything is selling for 50% off in DC either. It's not the Walmart clearance section by any means. So to sum this all up, what does this mean for you as a buyer in DC? Well, this means that there's more room to negotiate on price and terms because the homes are sitting on the market for a lot longer. So when homes sit on the market for longer, you as a buyer have more leverage to negotiate versus in Montgomery County. As soon as homes come on the market, they're gone, right? There might be a possibility where you have to be really competitive with your offer because there's a possibility that you're going to be competing against five, 10, 20 people for that one house. Let me give you a real life example. Look at this condo right here, which I helped a client of mine secure in DC. If she bought this condo for 685,000, it's a two bedroom, two bathroom, 1200 square foot condo, beautiful space as you can see through the pictures. Nothing's wrong with this condo. It's in a great location. It's a few blocks from Capitol Hill, really great location, but Look at how long this property sat on the market. It was listed in January of 2023 for 850 and it sat on the market for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months. And we were able to get this condo for $685,000. As a matter of fact, we got this for 665,000. She bought a parking space for 20 K. So that bumped up the price to 685, but the unit itself was bought at $665,000. Now, not all condos in DC are going to sell for this low under asking price. But if we put this pro particular property in a time machine and went back to like 2019, 2018, 2017, I'm pretty sure this condo would have sold pretty much close to their asking price because back then DC was way more competitive than it is now. To wrap this up and fulfill on my promise, the market in which it's going to be easier for you as a buyer to negotiate is most likely going to be DC and not Clarksburg and Montgomery County. Let's head back to Maryland. So now that you know what type of housing you can get in DC and what type of housing you can get in Montgomery County, Maryland in the $600,000 range. And you've also seen most importantly, what the two different neighborhoods in these jurisdictions have to offer. What team are you on? Are you team DC or are you team Maryland? I'm really curious about that. Let me know down below in the comments. But regardless of what team you're on, if you're looking to buy or sell a home in DC or Maryland or anywhere else in the DC metro area, you can always feel free to shoot me a text, call me, email me. We'll be glad to assist you with those real estate goals. Until next time, I'll catch you in the next neighborhood.